All right. Thank you so much. These folks have been a tremendous blessing to us since they have been here. And we thank the Lord for them. I was sitting there a while ago and I looked in the back and I saw a couple come in the door, moved over to the left-hand side and sitting all the way in the back. I recognized them. Some months ago I was uh, driving in and uh, stopped and this couple was just walking out in the parking lot out there and we got acquainted with them and we started talking and so every morning when they'd come out for their walk we'd talk and I looked back there and I said there they are it's about time they got here and so you just uh, don't make yourself scarce okay it's so good to have you we figured that after we uh, got through all of the last week and the busyness of it and driving all the way back that we'd be a little tired. So I asked our associate pastor, Brother Mike, to speak for us this morning. Brother Tom Green, our business manager tonight, and I'll be back in the pulpit on Wednesday evening. So are you ready to go, sir? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, now let's hold the tongue speaking down just a little bit this time, okay? And I'm joking. Maybe not, huh? Maybe not. Maybe not. You know I have a Pentecostal background. <laughs> no, I'm not going Pentecostal. <laughs> Some of the stuff out of my pockets. So, who knows, who knows what this special event we're doing today? Baptism. Baptism, right. Okay. All right. So... What would be more appropriate to speak on than baptism? Amen. Praise God. Some of y'all are with me. Some of y'all are trying to get ahead of me. That's all right. Praise God. So my text is going to be, some of y'all are really, fam y you're familiar with this. You should be familiar with this. If you've been in church over three weeks, you should be familiar with this. All right. Um, and I couldn't, I apologize, I couldn't get my printer to print something that I wanted to share, so I had to, I had to take a screenshot of it. All right, y'all know I don't like using electronic stuff up here, but sometimes it happens, amen? All right, so go ahead and turn to Acts 8, 26 through 38. That's where I'm going to be preaching out of. We're going to do a little expository preaching this morning. But while you're turning there, Acts 8, 26 through 38, I'm going to get a, I'm going to, we're going to look at two baptisms. Now there's, there's multiple baptisms in the Word of God. We're going to look at two of them this morning. Um, one of them is the baptism of John, and then the other one is the believer's baptism which is what we'll be doing here later on. And I must say, on a lighter note, Brother Justin has not seemed too concerned of me baptizing him until now. <laughs> I've, I've done several, haven't lost nobody yet. So, of course, the day is still young. We'll see what happens. All right. <laughs> like you got the life raft thing? You got the swimmies too? Good. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Try to get a little serious here. So we're, we're going to be looking at two baptisms. The baptism which was done by John and the believer's baptism. All right. So we will be going through this section of Scripture, but I'm not going to read it all right now. All right. If you got something to write with, you may want to jot down a couple of notes here. I'm going to have uh, two or three other scriptures. I try to keep it to, to a minimum. Let, can, can you give me a little volume? A little bit more volume here. How about that? Is that, um, is that all right? Y'all going to hear me a little better now? Okay, he's... I will not repeat what she said, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> something about electronic hearing device I don't know it's, it's all good alright so everybody hear me alright okay alright let's pray and then we'll get into God's word 
Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day you blessed us with. Lord, thank you for giving us a, a place to come here and corporately worship. Lord, I thank you for every home represented here. Uh, Lord, I thank you for those that would like to be here and can't. Lord, I'd like to ask that you would bless them. Lord, I ask that you would bless the reading of your word and the preaching of your word. Lord, I ask that everything here uh, that is done and said, you would be glorified and honored. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so, baptism, an outward sign of an inward change, all right? If somebody that is lost, not saved, gets baptized, they're a wet person. That's it. Baptism counts nothing for salvation, nothing. All right, baptism comes from the word baptizo, all right? So there, there's, your, there's your word for the day, baptizo. It means to be whelmed. You know what, what, there's a prefix that goes with whelmed. You get overwhelmed. You know that? You get overwhelmed with something. So if, if you're whelmed, you're in. You're, you're submerged. You're all the way in. I'm making sense so far? Okay, all right. Don't want to lose nobody. I want to keep everybody, everybody on track here. All right. To make whelmed, immersed, fully wet. All right. Symbolic meaning, death, burial, and resurrection. And I want to jot this down. It comes from Romans 6 and 5. Death, burial, and resurrection. Romans 6 and 5. As Christians, as particularly Baptists, we don't participate in sprinkling or nothing like that. We don't do that. That's, that's not what the Word of God says. If you're going to be overwhelmed with water, well, put it this way. If you're in a boat and it's sinking and you're in the water and you're overwhelmed with waves, you're not being sprinkled, are you? No. <laughs> you are going down. It's going to happen. You're going to, you're going to be baptized. You're going to be fully immersed. All right. Try to keep this serious but lighthearted too. We're not going to, I'm not going to beat you over the head with anything. All right. But, so, so this guy had his, had his son and he's explaining, um, well just let me tell you what he says. A father was talking to his oldest son about the boy's upcoming baptism. Wanting to understand the significance, significance of the event, he took great care to communicate with him. All right? While they were talking, the boy's younger brother, a little four-year-old, well, he left the room. He took off. He seemed visibly upset, <clears throat> so the father followed him to see what was wrong. Tearfully, the little boy confessed, I want to be alphabetized too. He wanted to be alphabetized too. All right. So, <laughs> alphabetizing <laughs> comes after you're saved, all right? Wanted to be alphabetized. John's baptism. Jot this down. Isaiah 40 and verse 3. John's baptism. Y'all familiar with that? They give you something to look up when you get home. Isaiah 40 and 3. See if this rings a bell. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The baptism of John. Do you see it? It's right there in the Old Testament. The baptism of John. Make sense? Yeah? Okay. All right. This prophecy was fulfilled 700 years later when John the Baptist came to prepare the way for Christ. Y'all remember that? Sure you do. Matthew 3, let me read this. Matthew 3, 1 through 3. Very familiar. If you've been in the New Testament any here lately, this is going to ring a bell. Matthew, excuse me, Matthew 3, 1 through 3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. 
John's baptism was repent and be baptized. All right? You repent. Y'all know what that is, right? You turn from your sin. All right, so he was specifically preaching to Judea here. Telling Judea, turn from your sin. Our Savior's coming. Jesus. And you will later, later on understand that uh, he said, that he, you know, he, here is the Lamb of God whose shoes I'm not even worthy to unloosen. Y'all remember that, right? Yeah? All right. If y'all didn't, y'all went to get in your Bible, okay? All right. So, so 700 years later, this was fulfilled. Isn't the Bible just exciting? Not necessarily the way I present it, but isn't the Bible exciting? It ties in from Genesis all the way through Revelation. Everything is interconnected and it centers around one person, which is who? Jesus. Amen. All right, so in a nutshell, now this is not an exhaustive study, and I know I say that a lot. Maybe one day I'll do an exhaustive study. Maybe a couple of Sundays and nine or something. We'll see. A couple of Sundays a month. We'll see how that works out. I'll throw him on the spot here. All right. Believer's baptism. Who is our, just mentioned his name, who is our ultimate example? Jesus, right. Christ, our Lord and Savior. He's our ultimate example. Let me jot this down. Matthew 3, 13 and 15. And I should have stayed there, but, but let me share this. Matthew 3, 13 and 15. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan under John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Then he allowed him. He, al he, he baptized him. Okay? Christ is our ex um, supreme example. So it's, it's, not, it's not just something we do. When you get saved, you need to be baptized. You are not any more saved by being baptized. You're not any less saved if you're not baptized. The thief on the cross in John 3.16 proves so many things over and over and over. The thief on the cross did not have an opportunity to go, Hey, wait a minute, i got to go get baptized. He didn't. Yet Christ says what? Today you will be with me in paradise. There's a denomination that their entire doctrine is built on Acts 2 and 38. Y'all jot that down because that has baptism in it. Acts 2 and 38. Jot that down. Um, it's the apost uh, oh gosh, apostolic church of the apostles. It's the apostolic church is what it is. I can't remember the exact name of the denomination. But it's like the church of the apostles. Their entire doctrine is built on baptism. It is. And it's really sad. Really sad. Alright. Acts. Are you still in Acts? Acts 8, 26 and 38. So we're going to give a breakdown up to salvation and baptism. And when I talked with Justin, he, he told me where he got saved. And if I recall correctly, it was at a booth at like the Flower Town Festival, right? It was at a booth at the Flower Town Festival. Was he in a church? No, he wasn't. Mary Beth was saved in a car on the side of the road. You don't have to be in a church to be saved. Now, you know, it helps to hear the word in church because we're going to preach the word here. I'm going to preach the word. Our pastor is going to preach the word. Tom, etc. We're going to preach the word. You're going to get the word of God here. All right. So he was at a booth, which brings me up to another point. Evangelism. Knocking on doors. Presenting the word of God. Okay? All right. Look at, look at uh, verse 26. In, in uh, Acts chapter 8 
And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. I'm going to go ahead and read this, guys, so we can get a context here. Verse 27, And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah, that's the book of Isaiah, okay, that's not a hidden book or nothing, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and says, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. Verse 33. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Now y'all look here. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, <clears throat> excuse me, and the eunuch said, See here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Y'all, there is a bunch in there, and ten minutes is not going to do this justice. Alright, I'm just going to be honest with you. So, <clears throat> verse 26. What do we see here? Now this should affect every one of us here. Every one of us. God says, the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, he said, go. What do we preach here? Go and witness. Go and witness. Go and knock on doors. Go and witness. When you're in a store, work, place of business, wherever you're at, Go, go and witness, all right? Just imagine, just some wild imagination if Philip hadn't done this. And if, if God had not had nobody else to do this, it's minutely possible that the entire African continent would not have heard the gospel. There's a slim possibility there. Now we know all things are possible through God. We know that. So God still had another plan. Alright. God says, Go toward the south unto the way that which goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. God didn't send him to a really highfalutin nice place, did he? He says, Go. It's out in the desert. You just go. You just, just start going. Verse 27, And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was coming, he was probably a, a Judaism proselyte, so he was, he was coming to worship there, okay? He was a proselyte, more than likely. But before that, he was a man of great authority. Do you ever get intimidated by, say, maybe the president of your company comes in there or something, or president of the HOA, or just whoever, a sheriff or something? No, no, no. They're people just like us. Don't let that intimidate you. So we have go, go and witness, and it doesn't matter who it is, witness. Go and witness. And that's what these folks done when Justin went to, went to the, uh, the booth there. For whatever reason, he went to the booth. It was probably God going, get on in here. You need to hear this. And he got there and he heard the good news. Now Justin, he may be someone of great importance. I don't know. Obviously he is because Christ died for you. Amen. You are of great importance. Amen. Praise God. Alright, so of great importance, um, 
position or whatever, doesn't matter. Go. If God says go, you go. You go and be that witness. All right. Verse 28. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Here we have go. Go again. Here, Philip, here he is. I done prepared him. You go and you go talk to him and you go see what's going on. Don't, don't raise your hand, but answer this within your own heart, within your own mind. If you walked out of here today, you go to eat, and somebody is sitting there with a track, a gospel track, and they're reading it, and they look puzzled, and God speaks within your spirit and says, help them out. Can you help them understand the basics of salvation? So I don't see no hands. You answer that in your heart. All right? The basics of salvation are where you could lead somebody to the Lord. All right? Now, on the heels of that, I have a discipleship class that I will be teaching starting Sunday. That's people express some interest in it. So, if you can't answer that, come to discipleship class Sunday during the Sunday school hour, okay? All right. I know it seemed like a plug for that class. I do. <laughs> All right. Verse 30, and Philip ran. He, ran. He, he, he went. God said go, and Philip ran to him. When God tells us to do that, we run, we go. Now, I look funny running. I really do. But uh, there's too much stuff flopping around. But we, we go. We go quickly. You go then. And he heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Hey, do you understand what you're reading? Do, do you comprehend this? Now, we got, we got to be humble when we do that. We don't want to come off as somebody, hey, man, you know, I can help you understand that right there. Yeah, we, no, we, humility, humility. Do you understand that? And he says, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip, they would come up and sit with him. So God had prepared everything the Ethiopian kicked the door open <laughs> when he's like, I need a hand understanding this. I really need, it. can you help me? There again, you answer that question in your mind. When you leave here today, could you help somebody understand a basic gospel track? All right? Verse 32, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb, dumb, before his shearer. And just so everybody understands, dumb right there does not mean he was intellectually challenged. He could not speak. Or, excuse me, he did not speak. He did not speak against what was going to happen to him. All right? So opened he not his mouth. That's Isaiah 53, 6 and 8. If you're not familiar with that, jot that down, Isaiah 53, 6 and 8, and, and read that. All right. Verse 33, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? In other words, verse 33, who is going to carry on Christ's work here? Who is going to carry his work on, all right? Verse 34, and the eunuch answered Philip and says, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? There again, we'll have those questions come to us. We need to be in the Word of God when those questions come to us. Study the Romans' road of salvation. Study that so when these questions come up, we can answer those questions. Amen? Y'all right, with me so far? Yeah? All right. All right. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. The same. He took the scripture opened it up, ex, uh, expounded on it, and preached Christ. All right? Verse 36, And as they went on their way, they come into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? They said, Look, we got water. So whether it's a river, or a pool of water, or a lake, it, it doesn't say. It doesn't, it doesn't say. All right, and Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 
he believed in his heart Christ. He, as we say here in the or not just in the South, but he got saved. All right, he got saved. There's a song that says, I got saved, I like that song. It's just right to the point. <clears throat> Verse 38, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. They went into the water. That nullifies any sprinkling, any dabbling in water, and I, and I know I preach against these guys a lot. The old boy in Charlotte, he set up their own. This is a platform for preaching right here, but they have a stage, all right? A stage is where you act. Here's a platform where we preach. But he was, he was you can look him up online. He was sitting there with a water gun, you know, and just, just acting silly, acting goofy. Yeah. Uh, we don't we don't sprinkle, we don't dabble, we baptize fully immersed in water, alright? Alright, that makes sense so far? Yeah? Okay. Alright. Look here, I want I want I want to share this with you. Baptism is like a wedding ring. Y'all familiar with a wedding ring? Most of us? I have to wear this and I think my fingers grow overnight. I've got like a 13 and my, my really nice ring doesn't fit no more. Baptism is like a wedding ring. They both symbolize transactions. A wedding ring symbolizes marriage just as baptism symbolizes salvation. Alright? Wearing a wedding, wedding ring does not make you married any more than being baptized makes you saved. Alright? To extend the parallel, if a person, especially a woman, does not wear a wedding ring, you can almost always assume that the person is not married. So it was in the New Testament times, if a person was not baptized, you could probably assume that he or she was not a believer. On this we must be clear, baptism is a symbol of salvation and only a symbol. But like a wedding ring, it is such an effective symbol that it should never be taken for granted. All right? So I, I, I know we cut up a little bit about baptism and holding them down to the bubbles quit and the feet quit kicking and all that. But it's, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, <laughs> we, for starters, we don't practice that. We do let them come back up. All right. We do. Before they tap out. If you're in martial arts, you understand that. All right. <laughs> so, the only thing that would make this any better is that if somebody got saved today and need to be baptized along with Justin, that would make this a hundred times better. And that would not detract from him because everything is ultimately about Christ anyway. It's not about us. It's not about the baptism candidate. It's about Christ, and it's about salvation. Absolutely nothing else matters. Nothing. So I want to invite you guys to stand, and if, I, if um, uh, Brother Bo, Brother Hannah, if you guys have a song ready, Justin, if you want to go ahead and head on back, sir, and start getting ready, you guys stand. And uh, I just want to have an opportunity here. If you don't know the Lord... If you're backslid from the Lord and you need to come to Him, now's the time to do it. If you've got something on your mind that you want to share with God at the altar, with uh, uh, altars always open, altars never closed. I believe as the pastor said earlier, you can always get a hold of God wherever you're at, any time of day. Um, if there's anything on your mind, like I said, today would be an awesome day for somebody to be saved if you're not saved while we're having a baptism here. We'll work you right on in. We'll hook you right up. All right.